Welcome back to NBA Cinema. So today we're going to talk about James Harden and everybody's think pieces on what's going on with him and Daryl Morey. Now he said that Daryl Morey was a liar. There was no way that they could fix that relationship. Uh, you had Kenyon Martin who had some harsh words for him. You had Stephen A. Smith. And also, uh, you know, you get to hear from Tyrese Maxey and the head coach Nick Nurse. And I always say it's a shame that Joe and B has to answer these type of questions. It seems like every training camp about his co-star. What I said before James Harden even came into the fold, I said, don't put the ball in his hands because you're going to mess with Tyrese Maxey's development. Even if he was a model player, model professional, you were going to mess with his growth and development because Tyrese Maxey had the ball and he was ascending at the time, making big shots, uh, you know, was able to make decisions in those moments. Now, James Harden always has the ball in his hands and Tyrese Max is playing off of that. Now they're going to try to put him back on the ball and that starts to become role confusion for a young player. So I'm like, mm, why y'all going so hard to try to get Harden? But they got him and people's always been enamored with his volume stats. I'm telling you, Kobe told us a long time ago, you don't win with that type of basketball. And um, Harden has become a diva, you know, over the last two and a half years or whatever, right? So he's been bouncing around every team. And here we are today. You know, he's wanting to trade. Tyrese Maxey talking about it. Kmart has something to say about it. Let's check it out. I can't, if I'm James Harden, I can't expect them people to give me another five years for $250 million, dog. I don't give a fuck what he promised me sitting at the dinner table. If I'm being honest, he tell me that shit, I'm leaving that movie meeting thinking he a fucking liar. For sure, for facts. If I'm being honest about the, putting everything on the table and being having with myself, fuck having to come search with anybody else. Mm -hmm. If I'm being honest with myself in this situation, Everything that I've put on the table, the last three stops, everything that I've put on the table, why would somebody sign me up for another five for the maximum amount of money that they could possibly give me? Because even... We're naive, to my point. No, we're, no, no. we're naive. We're, we're, we're naive, but we're still, if we just go off of the numbers... 22 and 11, 22 and 10, double double, led the league in assists. I'm still worth that money. There's two sides here. One is the James Harden side, one is the Daryl Morey side. Neither issue can be avoided. Let's deal with James Harden first. James Harden, my brother, you got to grow up. 34 years old now. You're a professional. You've been on three teams since January of 2021. Houston Rockets, Brooklyn Nets, now the Philadelphia 76ers. You forced your way out of the previous two, now you're trying to force your way out of a third, which you'll likely succeed. Of course, Wendy, I know you've heard this because you know I've heard this. The Philadelphia 76ers were looking for a guy like Terrence Mann along with an additional first round pick, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the Clippers weren't biting on that. They're not interested in giving up a first round pick. Who knows whether or not something will be able to be worked out. Here's the deal, Daryl Morey. James Harden ain't the only dude that felt lied to by you. Now, Daryl Morey is known as a dude, two things, and tell me if I'm wrong, Wendy. He's known as a dude that caters significantly to his star player. You know, he ingratiates himself with a star player, sometimes while alienating lesser players. He's had that reputation. But here's where it gets a, a bit dicey. He also can't stand confrontation. So when James Harden went out and said publicly that he was lied to, from what I'm told, he called Daryl Morey, his, his man. That's the dude that's looked out for him, that's hovered over this Houston Rockets franchise for the entire nine years or so that James Harden was there. He did everything but gave him a manicure and a pedicure personally, and I'm not sure Daryl Morey didn't do that. We obviously got the news that James wasn't here today. Um, just how does that impact you, impact you, like just moving forward as a team, just how do you sort of compartmentalize and uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe he has something to do. Uh, 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 I'm not sure. Uh, so, but we had a good practice. Uh, you know, 
we competed, went up and down a little bit. Uh, it's great for me. And I'm still, you know, coming back uh, and you know, I'm feeling myself. Uh, but I thought you know, today was great. Why he's not here? Well, uh, I think the organization has uh, made it clear what's going on. They're they're working on stuff as as we say day by day. So. That's it. We had a really good practice today. Very energetic with the guys that were here, and that's what we're focused on. Does it ever restart? Is there a point that it reaches where it's not day-to-day anymore, and you just turn the page? Well, I don't. Day, you know? Yeah, I mean, listen, it doesn't. Again, it's it's uh, it's been ongoing for for a long time now. Even summer, fall workouts, uh, training camp, etc. So again, like I want to keep saying the same thing every day. Um, but you know, I got a job to do with the guys that are here, and we just go to work. Um, if that changes, we'll, we'll adjust. You know, but Nick, with him, with him not being here, I guess the expectation is that he will not play in tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I think it's unlikely that he plays tomorrow. But again, you never know what tomorrow morning may bring. We'll see. You tired of asking these questions yet? I know I'm okay. I, mean, I, get, I get it. I get it. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a thing right here. And but, I, but again, I, I give you the same answers. You know, I don't, li- I don't really like to give you the same answers all the time but you understand I think you guys all understand that you know this is this is a team and we're going to prepare it the best we can and that's what we'll do we're working really hard I, I again Ty- Tyrese on the JJ's podcast you kind of commended James for you know the being there and working hard at practice are you a little shocked that he's not here right now I you know it's, it's personal stuff they ask me and uh, we're just focusing on who's here right now you know what I mean we got a game and I think Eight days, seven days. I have no idea. The Sixers media will post it and soon they'll let you know. But um, that's what we're focused on right now, man. We're trying to focus on getting better every single day. Uh, whoever's in the gym, I mean, we got a game, we got a job to do. And, uh, you know, for people that's here, we're focused on it. how would you describe your relationship with And you can go on and on with the distractions. It's clear the Clippers don't want you. We see Harden partying in Houston, hanging out at the strip clubs and he wonders why a team doesn't want him. I mean, that was okay at 25, 26 years old. Now looking at Harden at this stage of his career, why are we going to give him that type of money to show that type of, you know, and, and I ain't saying nothing wrong with him going to the clubs or whatever he wants to do in his free time, but he's not being as professional as they would like to see. What If I was a team and James Harden was still at his peak, let's, let's pretend he's still at his peak. He's going to play at his peak level. I would look at him and say, if things don't go 100% perfect and obviously we don't stroke his ego a certain way, then he's going to be on his way out. He, he's not going to stay with us. So why would I give away future draft picks and players that I feel like can help me in the future? And I know his game already. You got to believe who people tell you they are through their actions and James Harden is telling us exactly what he's going to do by a pattern of behavior. It don't matter how it comes about, but when it starts being every organization, we got to look at it as if, okay, well, we'll have an issue with him sooner or later too. It becomes that after a while. One organization, okay, let him out. Uh, But now you want to get back to Houston. So my thing is this, right? What was ever the problem with Houston then? Since you wanted to get out so bad, you was trying to get to Philly, you know, in the first place to follow Daryl Morey. Now you want to come back? No. I thought you should have stayed when they hired that black coach, uh, you know, Silas, and, and helped try to get that team to the playoffs to make that man look good. Now you come back, uh, you see Udoka, and now, you know, he Udoka then came out and said, no, we don't want James Harden. We don't want a player with the ball in his hand all the time. How are we going to ever develop Jalen Green, uh, Jabari Smith and all those players if Harden's dribbling around all the time. And, and we chose Fred Van Vliet because he's going to come in and be a leader. And ultimately, if a man Thompson develops the way he's supposed to develop, he's going to be fine going into that bench role. But he knows he's here for a starter slash mentor role right now to help a man reach the level that they think he can reach, which is an all-star level if he reaches his potential. So we're not bringing you in to disrupt that. You haven't shown that you're the consummate teammate. So, hey, I hope you land on your feet somewhere, but I don't blame none of these teams for not wanting you. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.
to next time. Peace.